Hello and welcome everybody to today's edition of Mexico News Network's breaking news business here at the El Dorado Royale Spa Resort in Mexico's Riviera Maya. I'm Elliot Bullman. Before we start, don't forget to check out all our social media networks, Facebook, Twitter and Google+. And you can stay with us live on MexicoNewsNetwork.com for more information about Mexico and the world. Let's start with today's information. The 2017 edition of the World Wine Competition that took place in Brussels attracted over 9,000 entries from 50 countries, all competing for gold, silver and bronze medals. And Mexico came home with 18 gold medals. A panel of 320 international judges, journalists, buyers, oncologists and sommeliers gave Spanish wines the highest number of medals, followed by France, Italy, Portugal and Chile. Another country in the top 10 was China, which doubled its medal count this year. The annual competition, which describes itself as the United Nations of Fine Wines, was held earlier this month in the city of Valladolid, Spain, in the heart of the winemaking Castilla y León region. Next year, it moves to Beijing, China. The Mexican wines will receive their medals from the president of the Concours Mondial de Bruxelles at an award ceremony on June the 14th in Mexico City. So Mexico came back a winner from the World Wine Competition in Brussels. Joining me now is the head sommelier of the Dorado Royale Resort. Thank you for joining us here, Pete. Nice to meet you. Nice yeah, to meet you as well. How are you doing? Doing great. Now, what do you think is behind this success? Mexico is, is coming back with six gold medals on, the, on this particular occasion. Okay, well, uh, I think there's a lot of things going on with Mexico. First of all, Mexico was already mm. an old wine region. A lot of people think that Mexico is just rising right now, but it's already started with uh, Querétaro and, for example, in the Valley of Paris, where's Casamero, the oldest winery of the whole North and South America. Um, Querétaro is really traditional because old um, Spanish uh, winemaking houses like uh, Fraschinet have been there already making sparkling wines already a long mm. time. So that has helped a lot to discover Mexico as a wine region. And nowadays the Valley of Guadalupe or Baja California has mm. been really marked as a new a wine region. A lot of small wineries but also big wineries as Lachetto, San Tomas, but smaller wineries as well. So I think that's yeah. helped a lot. In my view, the Mexican wine market is still maturing, so it's important to have earned these international recognitions, so as to guide buyers and consumers on the best wines in the world. The first biodigester for Mexico and all of Latin America was inaugurated last week in Milpa Alta, Mexico. The first biodigester in Mexico and Latin America will generate electricity from organic waste such as nopal, cactus and other vegetables. 100 tons of organic waste per month will be processed to generate electricity for nearby homes. During the inauguration, the president of the Mexican company Sustainability in Energy and Environment, Suema, Yahir Mojica Hernandez, emphasized that it was a 100% Mexican project that will power the energy of more than 150 houses nearby. We're making history by having the first biodigester of solid waste recovery on site. Up to five tons of nopal cactus will be transformed into energy, explained Yahir Mojica. Suema has been working with market stallholders and local residents of Milpa Alta for the best part of a year to make them recognize the importance of the program for the community. Markets are an interesting segment because they separate waste very well and generate a large amount of organic waste that currently doesn't have an adequate treatment process, Mojica said. The Milpa Alta Biogesta plant cost around 15 million pesos and was financed by the Science, Technology and Innovation Ministry. In my view, Suema can now take this first proven business model and turn it into franchises throughout the country using private and public investment. Last month, Mexican company Bimbo announced the acquisition of a bakery in Northern Africa. And now they've just announced a 65% stakeholding in India bakery Ready Roti India Private Limited. The acquisition of Grupo Adgal, located in Morocco, will boost Bimbo sales of bread by around $11 million by adding three local production plants with more than 200 employees. 
In the case of Ready Roti India Private Limited, annual profits are currently around $48 million. Bimbo announced in its 2016 annual report the strategy of targeting markets in Latin America, Asia, the Middle East and Africa, as demand for its products in these markets was expected to increase due to the increase in disposable income and changes in consumption habits. Bimbo is the largest bakery on the planet. Since 2002, the company has made 11 acquisitions in different parts of the world. Today, half of the company's portfolio is made in the Asian style, which includes, among others, Japanese-style bread varieties, extra-soft sweet stuffed buns, natural yeast breads, and sliced loaves, with local formulas and processes, which have been a source of knowledge for other Grupo Bimbo operations. Grupo Bimbo reported sales of three and a half billion US dollars in 2016. The company produces and distributes fresh and frozen bread buns, cookies, cakes, English muffins, bagels, packaged products, tortillas, salted snacks and confectionery. It now has a presence in 22 countries throughout America, Europe and Asia in its 171 plants. In my view, Bimbo's forte is that they firstly research and then invest large amounts of income in order to adapt their portfolio of products to local tastes. This was all for today. Thank you for joining us here at the El Dorado Royale Spa Resort in Mexico's Riviera Maya. I'm Elliot Bullman. Before we go, don't forget to check out all our social media networks, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, and catch us live on mexiconewsnetwork.com for more information on Mexico and the world. Until next time.